In this video, we're going to go through a few problems involving power. So in this first problem, we want to show that a kilowatt hour is a unit of energy and find its value in joules. So you may know if you pay an electricity bill that your, the energy that you use that the electric company charges you for is measured in kilowatt hours. But it doesn't seem like it's a unit of energy because it has this time in it. And so that's why we might want to show that this really is a unit of energy. So one kilowatt hour is going to be equal to 1,000 watt hours. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of my prefix kilo and replace it with 1,000 watt hours. And now one watt is equal to one joule per second. Okay, so it's how fast we're expending energy. And so if I just rewrite this as 1,000 joule per second, times hours, now I need to get these two time units to match up. So I have one hour and one second, and I'm going to convert it to seconds. So this is going to be, um, I'm going to take this and multiply by 3,600 seconds per one hour. Okay, so this is going to cancel my hour and my second, and it's going to give me 3.6 times 10 to the 6 joules. Okay, or this is 3,600 kilojoules of energy. Okay, so whenever we co um, converted our hours to seconds, um, our seconds immediately canceled and we were left with the answer. In this next problem, you use a rope and a pulley to lift a 40 kilogram crate up a distance of five meters in a time of 12 seconds at a constant velocity. And we're asked to find your power output. So we have a crate that we're lifting using a pulley. So the tension in the, in the rope is pulling it up while we're pulling down. Okay. And then if we write what we know, we have a mass of 40 kilograms. And it's always a good idea in problems like this to go ahead and find the weight just in case we need it. So this is mass times gravitational acceleration or 40 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared or 392 newtons. Okay, so one of our expressions for power is power equals force times velocity and we can see that we have a force we have a weight and then we're pulling on this pulley so we might be able to find this force and then it gives us a distance and a time and so we should be able to get velocity so velocity should be fairly easy it's just distance over time and so if we do five meters for our distance over time of 12 seconds just 12 seconds this is a speed of 0 0.417 meters per second okay and now we just need to make sure that we know this force okay so I have a weight but I need to know that this weight is the force that is um, Okay, so I have the velocity and I just need to find this force. So if we just draw a quick free body diagram for this crate, there's tension in the rope pulling up and then there's the weight of the crate pulling down. And from Newton's laws, if we sum up the forces in the y direction, we have tension minus the weight. And it told us that it was moving at a constant velocity. So that means it's not accelerating or our tension is equal to the weight okay so our tension and when we're pulling on this rope that is really what this force that the tension that we're using when when we pull on this rope there's tension and that tension is what's pulling the crate upwards so this force in our power expression is the tension but because we know it's equal to the weight we can replace it with our weight times the velocity since we know they're equal 
And if we plug this in, we'll get 392 newtons times 0 0.417 meters per second. When we plug that in, we get 163 watts. Wow. The next problem, your roommate has left town and forgot to turn off two 60 watt light bulbs in the living room. If they are gone for three full days and the cost of electricity is 0 0.09 uh, dollars per kilowatt hour or nine cents per kilowatt hour, find the cost of leaving these lights on. So first let's find our power. So we have two 60 watt light bulbs. So that's two times 60 watts or 120 watts. And then our rate that it gave us is, I'm going to rewrite this as 0 0.09 dollars per kilowatt hour. So it's a weird way to say this, but I like to put my units together the way we would do other quantities. It might just sound funny when you say it. And our time is three days, which is equal to 72 hours. Okay, so getting this in hours, we'll make sure that our time dimension lines up. And from our definition of power, power is just the amount of energy that we spend in a given amount of time. So it's our change in energy over change in time. Okay, so if we want to figure out how much energy we use, we're just going to solve for the energy. So that's going to be the power times our time interval. Okay, so if we plug in our power, we had 120 watts for 72 hours. And this is going to give us 8,640 watt hours or 8.64 kilowatt hours. Okay, now our cost is going to be our rate times our, the amount of energy that we spent. Okay, so our dollars per kilowatt hour times however many kilowatt hours we used. So this is nine cents or 0 0.09 dollars per kilowatt hour. So I'm gonna write it like this on the bottom times 8.64 kilowatt hours. So now just like in other problems, our units are gonna cancel when we plug this into our calculator, we get zero point seven eight dollars. Okay, so we rewrite it like this, or seventy eight cents. And so leaving two sixty watt light bulbs on for three days really isn't going to cost that much. So maybe you shouldn't get too mad at your roommate. The next problem: a lift weighing five thousand newtons should carry supplies a vertical distance of 24 meters in 18 seconds at a constant velocity. If the lift has a power rating of 30 kilowatt hours, find the maximum weight the lift can carry. So looks like our power is going to be 30 kilowatts. And if we write our expression for power, it is the energy or work done in some amount of time. And we know work, our definition for work is a force times a displacement. So if we plug that in, we get a force times distance over time. Okay. And now this force, if we draw a free body diagram or a little picture, we have tension pulling this lift up. So lift kind of another word for an elevator, and we have weight pulling it down, the total weight that's on the lift, including the weight of the lift. And so if we use Newton's laws and sum up our forces in the y direction, since it's moving at a constant velocity, again, our tension is just going to equal the weight. So since the
So since the tension is really the force that is applying this power, so the power is really the amount of work done by the tension in some amount of time. But we know the tension is equal to the weight, so we can just replace the force with the weight over this distance in some amount of time. And we need to keep in mind this is going to be the total weight of the lift and what it's, what it's carrying. So if I rewrite this, we're going to have the, let me do it this way, the 5,000 newtons of the lift plus however much weight we add to it. And then multiply that by our distance over our time. And this is, again, our expression for power, so we can set this equal to 30 kilowatts. Okay, And now we want to solve for our additional weight that we can add, because we want to find the maximum weight that we can put on our lift for it to carry. So if we do that, find the additional weight that we can add, we're going to multiply by time on both sides, okay? So we're going to have 30 kilowatts multiplied by our time. Then we're going to divide by the distance to get it to the other side. And then we're going to be left with this 5,000 newtons that we need to subtract to move it over. Okay, so this is our final expression. When we plug all of that in, this is going to be 30,000 watts times 18 seconds over a distance of 24 meters. And then we have to subtract off the weight of the lift itself. And when we do that, we get 17,500 newtons or 17.5 kilonewtons. So the lift can carry quite a bit more than it actually weighs. The next problem, in the process of throwing a 10 kilogram mass in 1.5 seconds, a power lifter accelerates the mass from rest to a speed of 15 meters per second and raises the mass 0.75 meters. And we want to find the power of the lifter. Okay, so it's a little play on words from power lifter. The power is equal to the work done in some amount of time, or the amount of energy you transfer in amount of time. And so the work is just that change in energy, or the final energy minus the initial energy. In this case, or this is the change in the this in this case, this is our final energy is the final kinetic plus final potential minus the initial energy, which is initial kinetic plus initial potential. Okay, so we're going to say that, one, the mass is at rest, so initially it has no kinetic energy. And then we're going to call the mass, um, is, we're going to say the mass starts from y equals zero. Okay, and it's being lifted up as he throws it. So this is going to be zero as well. Okay, so at rest and at y equals zero. Okay, so our work is really just how much we're changing the kinetic and the potential energy by speeding it up or accelerating it and lifting it through some distance of 0.75 meters. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to write this over here. Our work is going to be our final kinetic energy. So 1 half mvf squared plus our gravitational potential energy, or however much we lift it up. And if we plug all of that in, we get 1 half the mass of 10 kilograms times a, we bring it up to a speed of 15 meters per second going to square that and then add 
10 kilograms. We could have factored this out. We can just write it again times 9.8 meters per second squared over the height that he raises it or 0 0.75 meters. And that is equal to 1200 joules. So he does 1200 joules worth of work or spends 1200 joules of energy accelerating this mass and lifting it up through this distance. Now our power is our work over time. So we take this 1200 joules of work that he did over a time of 1.5 seconds and we get that the power lifter did had 800 watts of power. 